Hi, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to take an old thread color chart and turn it into a cool mixed media folio. Let's get going. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I am in full on, I don't know what I'm doing mode. As usual, I kind of make it up as I go along. So I have had this thread chart for a long, long time. It opens up way big. doesn't even fit on the camera. But I used to design punch needle pattern designs. And I was a distributor for um, Madeira threads. And this was a thread color chart for the wool blend threads that we use for punch needle. And they had strips here with the actual threads wound around them for each color. Well, I, I ripped those out to reduce the bulk. And I'm gonna use this folder and do something cool with it, just some kind of little folio thing, but I like the way it opens up. It's on good stiff cardstock or whatever kind of paper it is. It's nice and sturdy. So I'm going to start with that. And, you know, vintage vibe is kind of my thing. So color-wise, this is the packaging that my Bare Minerals makeup was packaged in was inside the box this paper it's like almost like a plastic really heavy and it says be natural be good be original all over it in script so I just kind of like the look of that and then I have some other thinner brown paper packaging it came in a big long strip but it was perforated I don't know if you can see that but the, every you know, so many inches or whatever, it's perforated. So that was perfect. So I tore that. So I am going to start just by cutting these to size and getting this all covered front and back with these papers. I don't have a whole lot of this, so I'll just have a couple panels of that. Um, I may find some other things, but I'm going to work on that. And when that is, everything's all cut and covered and dried. Then I'll be back and show you and we'll go from there. Okay, all the panels are cut and glued down and dry. And I just made kind of a belly band around the front with that script paper that I had left from doing every other panel on the inside. And then every other panel I did with the brown packaging paper. So this is all ready to go. I made like a little stack there right on the very front where I'm going to put some sort of a closure. I punched the holes already. So it's ready for the next step. Okay, time to get some color down. I just got this Distress Oxide Spray in Vintage Photo. And so since I love the color so much, I decided that was where I was going to start. And I was really surprised. I don't know if this is normal or if the product is old. I mixed it and mixed it and mixed it. But you'll see here in a minute. I'm, I sprayed it on and then I'm sprinkling water to create just some spots and give it kind of a really old feel. But when I dried it, instead of staying the nice brown vintage photo color, it turned gray, which I didn't hate, but it's not what I was going for at all. Maybe it's the type of paper that I put it on. If anybody knows, leave me a comment below and tell me if this is normal and if it is, why? I mean, I get that it's the oxide that is reacting there, but I really wanted brown, not gray. And I didn't try it on another piece of paper. I probably should have just done that and that might have given me the answer. But so anyway, I didn't hate it. I just continued on with it. Um, so I sprayed it and 
you saw me run the paper towels over it just to kind of pick up some of the puddles and then I dried it off and you can see there I mean some of it is a little bit brown and a lot of it is gray it still has a really good vintage feel to it but I was just surprised that the color reacted that way and I, I went at it again thinking okay maybe I need to build up the color but it just did the same thing um, it's it's a kind of a chalky gray color taupey gray it's not super gray but will you see it I don't know it's okay I just went on with it so then I decided to spray it pretty heavy just along this is it's upside down so that's why I'm spraying it along the bottom or the edge closest to me but I'm just going to try to get some drips from that distress oxide spray so I sprayed it pretty heavily and then sprayed it with some water just to get it to be a little thinner so I could get some drips so that's what I'm doing here so I did the whole outside of the folio with the distress oxide spray in vintage photo and then I went around the edges and down the creases with the same color but with the ink pad the distress oxide ink pad in vintage photo and it's not terrible I kind of like it it's it's super grungy I did get more brown on that right side but I think that's more from my ink pad than it was from the distress oxide spray okay I've been working on this and I'm going to give you a quick peek at where I'm at this is what I have on the cover so far and I poked a hole here and one back inside here somewhere so that I can tie it here because it's going to get thicker than it was and I want it to be able to stay closed and then on this side I have one of my nine layer tags, one of my altered playing cards, and a little Tim Holtz paper doll there. In this one, there's two tuck spots. This one just has a pretty little card that you can write on the back of if you want to. And this is one of my digital download cards, and it has a little card inside that you can write on. This is an original old drugstore label. And in the inside it says, Life is a three ring circus. Eat the cotton candy and then just ignore the scary clowns. And this was from a book. I tore it in half and put half on each side. So that's where I'm at. And then I have this whole inside to do. After I do the inside, I'll be back and give you a peek at that. And I had a brilliant... I think brilliant idea for what to do with this when it's all done so you'll want to stay tuned to the end of this video and find out what my idea okay, is. Okay I am back side one is done I'm going to start on this we'll call it the inside I guess and I'm just going to start with a dry brush layer of gesso just to kind of bring everything together so it looks a little more cohesive Okay, now I'm going to just get some color down here and then figure out where I want to go next. So I have Burnt Sienna, in keeping with the vintage feel. Um, truthfully, I'm just going to get some on these sections 
not going to be too precious about it. I'm going to get some drips down with transparent red iron oxide, putting this again, the red iron oxide at the top, and take my mister and give it a spray, I'm just hitting the trigger lightly. it up and let it run. Okay, pretty dry. I have this um, crackled stencil and I'm going to use Prussian blue and fluid acrylic and a big stencil brush. For my next layer, I am just going to randomly put down some pieces of this Tim Holtz typography collage paper. I want to get another layer down, but I also want to cover some of the um, fold areas to try to camouflage them a bit, and I think the um, Tissue paper is thin enough that it will still allow the paper to fold correctly, I hope. We're going to find out. And this paper is thin so you see what's underneath to some extent, which I like. I mean, I just put matte medium underneath, lay the paper down, and then put matte medium on the top. It's just really the perfect weight collage paper for me. Okay, I just <clears throat> opened this up so I have four panels showing and I've laid down some drywall tape and watered down my Prussian blue and I'm just I put matte medium over the drywall tape it is self-adhesive the kind that I bought but I don't always trust that when I'm using a lot of wet media but I'm just getting a little color kind of in and through and behind just putting the watered down paint down on top of it and then just dabbing it back with the paper towel just to get it to look more random and then aged okay I think that's good. I'm working this real intuitively, you guys. I just kind of doing and evaluating and doing some more, and I'm not real sure where to go next. I'll give you 
a little close up maybe. I decided before I go on, I'm going to put some Prussian blue drips on these pages because the ones that I put on before pretty much got covered up. So I started already. I'm just going to maybe get it to drip down through that crease. I don't know if it'll go or not. We might have to help it. went ahead and did drips on all the panels. Everything is dry and I think all I'm going to do is just put some inspirational words on each panel um, because the background is so busy but I think it's interesting. Oh, I added some washi tape here and there on each panel as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and get these quotes put down with matte medium. And I'm going to call it done, and then I have something I need to talk to you about. And the quotes were just printed out on tracing paper from my computer printer. And I'm hoping they don't run. They've been in my stash for long enough that I don't think they will. But if I push hard enough, I suppose I could get them to smear. So I'm just going to go carefully. These quotes are all just a little bit about struggle and keeping going and staying positive. Actually, I'm going to go over the entire panel now with matte medium just to give it a little bit of a protection. Speed it up and meet you at the end. Almost done. I added some just little stick on letters and numbers there and stamped that on there. I added the button and the thread so that, whoops, wrong way, this can just go around a simple closure just to keep it shut. So you saw me do this and this and then it opens up and the inside just has all these inspirational quotes and just a little art but it can stand if you wanted to stand it on a desk like so you can write in it add papers to it whatever just I always want to go the wrong way with that so I will take some photos and so you can see it up close and I wanted to tell you that I hit 1,000 subscribers this past week, so I am going to do a giveaway. I will make a separate video about that. But um, winner's choice, if you would like to have this as part of the winning prize, you're more than welcome to. 
I know I have a lot of subscribers that are not part of the artist community and may not appreciate or want or see any need to have something like this. Um, so I will leave it up to you. There will be an actual prize for the winner and this would just be a little bonus. So stay tuned for the big announcement and the giveaway. I guess according to YouTube rules and regulations, we can't call it a giveaway. It has to be called a sweepstakes. So when I put the video up, it will be announced as a 1K sweepstakes instead of a giveaway. But it's a giveaway. I'm giving it away. Okay? Thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed watching me put this little folio together, give this video a thumbs up. Share it out for me if you would. That really helps my channel. And invite your friends to my channel. And in the meantime, go make some art. Oh yeah, and subscribe if you haven't. Thanks. Bye.